uh, in terms of like, if you can think of anything that can fit on merchandise and also, yeah, yeah, just like merchandise, like postcards, uh, t-shirts and uh, posters. Okay. Right. And then, uh, so what we'll do is we'll start to sell, uh, push selling your art on here and, um, uh, do, do, do. Yeah, uh, push selling your art on here. Uh, but what's gonna happen though down the line, uh, once the, the the gallery is back open, uh, you'll have access. Uh, you'll have access to being part of our incubator, and uh, that will give you access to coming into the gallery to work on your own art and uh, post your own wall, uh, post your art on the wall. Uh, and uh, we would at that point work with you more. Like I, I would work with you day day to day. To kind of like uh, promote your art and uh, help you sell the art. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so, like, my whole goal is like is to work with artists whose art can be sold at four thousand dollars and up. Um, so, uh, like, I I took this whole weekend to kind of like figure that out. Yeah. Uh, like, kind of study what is it that makes. You know what's the difference between an artist who sells an art piece for four thousand and ten thousand dollars? All right, so like that was my study for the the whole thing, and then I figured it out. Uh, you know, and it's it all comes down to like just finding the people who who value the art in that way. Right. Uh, so let me see. I'm just gonna try and get the interview questions quickly. Was this um? When you say on the wall, um, is this like just renting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, the way uh, I will do it um, is uh, I will, it will be renting wall space, but okay. I will do it in such a way that it, it doesn't cost much. Uh, so it's like $50, we'll, we'll, we'll be charging like 50 per month, and then after that it's like $20 per, no. Fifty dollars to start up, and then after that, it's twenty dollars per month. Uh, but for like, and then that gives you, and that also gives you access to the gallery itself, and uh, and uh, the gallery itself, like pretty much, and uh, that also on a day-to-day -day basis allows us to um, use that funding to help promote your your work. Uh, help promote your work on on online and uh, to the right people, basically. Right. Like so, uh, one thing I notice in the arts community is that like we're really more so progressive and uh, uh, and uh, left. Like we're more on the left leaning side, and the people who actually do buy art are usually like more conservative. Right. Like the people who have the money to buy the art. So like we're talking about dentists. Uh, we're talking about yeah. like lawyers, uh, you know, high profile business people. Those are the people that actually buy the art. And what we do is we make the mistake of advertising to ourselves, right? And like, I mean, us as artists, like we, <laughs> you know, we're artists, like why are we are advertising to our own ourselves? Like we should be advertising to those people who buy, actually buy art. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. So when you say fifty dollars per month and then like twenty like on the wall, do you mean like the entire wall or just like one, uh, uh, like the size basically like uh, of the wall? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the math is that right now we can fit about ten to twenty artists at three feet by nine feet. Sorry, it was it nine feet by? Yeah, so three feet by nine feet. So three feet wide, nine okay. feet up. Uh, so we can fit about 20 artists uh, on, on the wall space, right? Like, so basically the initial payment is $50 uh, mm -hmm. to start up. And then after that, it will be $20 per month uh, for like just for maintenance. And then uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll also take a commission out of it, uh, like out of the art that we sell. But my goal though is, uh, you know, to get it up to like, to work with artists who have art that is worthy of saying this is worth four thousand dollars, like you, you can't, you got to pay four thousand dollars or even five thousand dollars. And the reason for that is because the way art collectors work, if you sell your art for four thousand, they bought it for four thousand. They're looking at it as a tax write-off, right? So, 
uh, the, the, the problem becomes like when you um, end up selling a next art piece for $600, you've now cut away the value of your art and therefore the value that they bought it for. Right? But if you are, your price goes up from 4000 to 5000 their their whole collection goes up. Right? Like, so you now sold it to a second person for 5000 To that first person, they can now resell your art for 5000 because they're like, oh, wow, this person is now selling at 5000 right? So your art is like, it's almost like stock market uh, value at this point. Right, but the the challenge is actually having your artwork sell yeah, uh, yeah. for five thousand. Um, mm -hmm. So, because uh, I I just did like a really quick, um, just just a quick uh, view of like the gallery ten seventeen. Yeah. Um. So when you so when you said three by three feet wide by nine feet uh, uh -huh. high, is that the space that you'll be renting at ten seventeen? Uh, yeah, so that will be the wall space that you get, right? But okay. uh, you can come in to work on your art. Like, you can come in to work on mm -hmm. your studio stuff. Uh, however, uh, the thing is, we haven't figured out yet. Uh, we have, like, this was, like, we were just figuring this out when the when this whole pandem pandemic happened. Right. Happened. So, uh, you know, so, like, this is something that I have to go back in there and figure out, like, how exactly... Uh, we would split up the space inside of the gallery. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so I have a series of questions. Sure. And then so we will go like, and, and the whole point, like, uh, um, I'll explain this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the way it is, is like we're going to, I've been, I've done an interview earlier, which is like exactly the same as this one. And uh, uh, originally, my goal, like, and I'm not sure, like, uh, like, cause we're like, a lot of this is like kind of new territory. But uh, the whole goal uh, would be to release one single video that has all of your interviews, and uh, in the meantime, publish your your single store, and on a weekly basis, we'll release the the big uh, podcast video to kind of mm -hmm. promote everybody. Like, hey, these are the artists that were on the, the podcast mm -hmm. and uh, view their interviews and also view their artwork. And that way the video becomes like a promotional tool for all of us. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it becomes a promotional tool for all of us. And uh, the whole point is to see, if, uh, to try and publish it on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, but mainly YouTube, right? Because YouTube generates revenue and uh, the revenue is shared between uh, all the artists and uh, Creative UTO and Gallery 1017. Okay, and um, I'll ask you something. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that you're gonna be setting up the store. What exactly will the store look like? Like, is it just going to be um, displaying like the original paintings? Yeah. Or, yeah. Will it be just displaying original paintings or will, um, yeah, like uh, how do you envision uh, the store to be uh, like set up? Uh, so you can actually go on the website now. Uh, basically what it does is it shows your, your um, it shows your bio. Yeah. And uh, below your bio, it will show all your, all the paintings that you submitted for this, uh, uh, that you submitted. Okay. Right. And uh, in the future, what you can do is you can submit new art and we would actually create a brand new page for you. Uh, and that would be like, and you know, and, and that page, uh, the purpose of that page is to sell the artwork. So when, when people go to the, the page, they, they see the art, they click on it and they're like, wow, I, I really like this. And uh, um, like, I am saying $4,000 for artwork, but that's only the original pieces. Uh, with that said, we will also have like t-shirts selling. We'll also have, uh, what's that called? T-shirts, we'll have posters selling as well and postcards. And like, so anything that we can put your art on, uh, we'll have that selling at, so that we can get uh, anybody that isn't, that wants to just at least impulse by your art or by you know like that can't afford the four thousand. 
Okay, but um, as far as uh, merchandising, uh, who has, um, like, I'm, I'm guessing the artist has more control over what to, um, what to sell in the sense of, like, if I just want to sell original paintings yeah. and not have any of my work, for example, on merchandise. Yeah, definitely. You have control over that. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll work with you to, uh, uh, I'll work with you and uh, go with whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That, and that's the whole point of the incubator, right? Like, so it's like, it's, it's, um, it's to create like a community of artists who are just like kind of working, like not kind of, but who are working together, like are sharing resources. And there is a specific person, which would be me, who is just focused on, okay, on marketing, right? Like, so uh, I would be on a day-to-day -day basis work on how to uh, uh, figure, try to figure out how to sell your art, how to advertise it, and uh, kind of be a spokesperson, customer service person who is, um, you know, uh, who is just getting uh, the people who uh, are getting the buyers in so that they come, can come and buy it. Okay. Um, okay, so that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, and so, what about um, what about if I um, what about if like a like a collector comes to me and yeah. and says, "Hey, I saw a painting of yours on your website or on Instagram, and I'm going to buy it." And the same painting is also uh, on uh, on you know on on the store. In the store. Uh yeah, have you thought about Probably that? I don't have no control over that, right? Like, I can't tell you. Uh, like, I can't necessarily tell you what you can't and can't sell on a separate note. And like, so, yeah, right. I, I'm not, I wouldn't limit you. Uh, but I would love to, like, if it was, if it became a situation where you say, yeah, yeah, uh, contact these guys or, um, you know, or something of that nature, like, but it doesn't, yeah. Uh, like I, I wouldn't have control over, over what sales you make away from the gallery itself. No, uh, that's true. But I'm saying like, if, um, cause if they contact me, you know, yeah. from, uh, from the store, like, um, yeah. I don't know how you would set it up, but I'm guessing like, you're going to have an option of like contact, uh, the artist, right. And then yeah. they could, um, from your website can navigate um, oh. to contact me, right? That makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, my goal is to have it so that they can, uh, so like my my rules to, uh, I'm a web developer. Mm -hmm. and my rule to a website is that it needs to serve a customer within two clicks. Right? Like, so the person would have uh, seen a page, would have, Googled you probably would have seen you on Facebook and they clicked and that first click must reward them with your art. And that's mm -hmm. one. Uh, so they'll read your bio actually uh, first, then they'll see your art. And then the second click I want to happen is for them. That's to, sh to buy the art. And I was like, Oh, I like this click. Right. And that's, that's them shopping for the artwork. Right. And uh, just, and it's just like basically from experience and or, or just studying, it's like you people have shorter attention span. And if you don't yeah. give them what they want, then you've lost your sale, you've lost the money and it's all gone. All right. So yeah. uh, I want to prevent that as much as possible uh, for you. Yeah, there's, there's, um, that's fine. But um, mm -hmm. I'm saying like if they contact me, um, you know, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I sell it through that. Uh, uh, through that platform, whether it's like my website or my Instagram or some other websites that I'm a, a part of, yeah, yeah, then I should be able to take it down or some, you know, like yeah. notify, like you know, uh, on this site that says, "Hey, this this painting is sold." Yeah, but I didn't sell it through you guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that's not a problem. You can definitely do that. Right, but then you guys wouldn't collect the. Uh, I'm guess I think it said forty percent. The, the commission no we wouldn't yeah. collect the commission no right okay at that point like i i wouldn't have control over it right and i don't want to police that that's going to be too much of a headache 
I'd rather create a relationship with you where, you know, like a relationship with you where, you know, hey, I'm working with these guys, uh, you know, like where you do that on your own as opposed to me trying to police you. So uh, my goal is to create a relationship with you mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, facilitate uh, uh, you being an artist as much as possible. Okay. And when do you think you're going to have like this launched? Um, cause I, I know you, like you put that on Facebook, right? Uh, for people to, to apply. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have published your, um, your one picture that you sent already. Okay. This weekend, like I'm trying to make it seamless. So I've been trying to find a solution that's going to make, uh, a person going to the website and buying art seamless. So I'm going to try and figure that out this weekend. Okay. On Monday, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get all the videos uh, ready to go. And on Monday, it would like, that would be like episode one, or, uh, not episode one. I think we're at episode four of the, the podcast uh, where, where people will see these conversations that we're having with artists. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great questions. You have uh, any more? Uh, probably. I just have to, like, you know, um, think about okay, them okay. and write them down more. Um, no yeah. worries. Uh, I have several questions. I have a whole list of questions. The first one, and I guess this is for the general public more, uh, even though I, I, I'll probably put this whole thing on there. Uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, my name is Camille Swatek, and uh, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, I mostly do paintings, um, but I also do writing and I sculpt. Um, I also take photographs, both uh, commercially and in fine arts, both in digital and film. And I also write. So just a very creative guy that loves to uh, create Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, which one of them is your favorite? Like, uh, which one of, yeah, which one of these is your favorite? Uh, definitely painting. Uh, painting for me is, has just always been a part of, uh, part of my life. And um, as much as I love to do, you know, like photography or, or sculpting, um, I just feel more connected to painting. Painting, um, yeah. I, 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 that's dope. I, I started like painting sort of uh i've been trying to learn it and it's one of the most relaxing things i've ever done in my life it's it's mm -hmm. so free 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 flowing so i understand why that would be like your favorite uh, uh why did you like why yeah why did you get started in the art uh well, i mean like ever since i was a little kid um i was just always kind of glued into the interior world of just my imagination, just always using it. Um, I, uh, I, I was born in, in, uh, in communism and uh, it was very, very tough in, oh, yeah. when it comes to um, like, you know, finances. So, and I didn't have a lot of like toys or anything like that. So even when I immigrated with my family to Canada, yeah. um, you know, we couldn't really afford a lot of toys, but I made best with what I had. So I would like pick up like a stick if I would go fishing with my dad and just like use that stick as, um, as some kind of sword or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just use your imagination constantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, basically like when I was, when I was a newcomer to Canada, I mean like I, I grew up before the whole anti-bullying campaign. Uh, so I used to get picked on quite a lot cause I was short, skinny and scrawny. Ah, uh, no way. And, and I just, and I was made fun of because of my nationality. And um, so I just basically uh, put on, you know, some headphones, you know, just listen to my favorite music and just like, just, just glued to my sketchbook and just doodling and drawing. And yeah. um, that's how it actually started. And I couldn't articulate it um, at that time or like years later. Um, but it was kind of like getting lost in that moment of like, you know, when you, when you're sketching or when you're concentrating on yeah, something yeah. so hard that you just like, you forget what's going on. You know, you like the sensation of time and space dissolves. Definitely. And, um, 
later, uh, many years later, when I went to art school, um, I was able to uh, articulate it and like talk to other artists and other professors. And like, uh, you know, I had like a mentor. Uh, and I realized that like, that's what I love doing from a, um, from a little kid. Uh, and so um, I'm still kind of, you know, exploring that and, uh, and just fascinated by, uh, by exploring the subconscious. I guess that's how I kind of, you know, got started. Uh, you know, you can thank, you know, thanks to bullying, I guess, uh, you know, which is kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. It is. It's, it's one of those things. Uh, and you, you go in your subconscious, you, you kind of like, you know, I can't explain it. Like you get uh, connected. Like, I, you know what it is? Um, I say that uh, uh, we as artists are the universe articulating itself. Mm -hmm. and uh you know so it's like that's that subconscious you you connect with a higher power and you start to articulate whatever it is that you hear from that from that higher power uh like people can call it all kinds of different things like god the universe uh you know chakras uh whatever they they feel comfortable with right like and it's uh, and that's what humanity not just artists like i guess all artists all humans are artists so it's like it's all about create uh, connecting with with the universe and articulating that. Uh, what's your nationality? Uh, I'm Polish. Uh, Polish, Polish Canadian. Nice. And you've been here. How long have you been here for? Oh goodness, uh, <laughs> a few decades. I'll just leave it at that. Welcome to uh, welcome to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the next question, I guess, is uh, what are you no best known for? as an artist? Um, depends who you ask. Uh, ah. You know, um, throughout like my art career, um, I've, I've worked with a lot of uh, great people. I've, you know, um, including, uh, you know, some professors as well. Um, so that, that's kind of hard to say, but I mean, um, I guess the only thing that comes to mind at this moment is, uh, probably the amount of productivity that I do. Yeah, okay. Um, when I was uh, in my thesis uh, painting um, program at, uh, at OCAD, uh, I was just kind of like, I was probably one of the first people in the morning and one of the last people to leave at night nice. in the studio. And um, I remember just my friends like, just basically like, dude, you need to take a break. You're, you're in here all the time. <laughs> you don't leave and you're just like and i had um if you, if you go like on my instagram account and yeah, some yeah. of the older posts like you'll see just paintings like work in progress paintings nice. scattered all over like i was literally like running out of space because yeah, some of yeah. them were so big some of them were so were like smaller some of them were like medium um so i, I would say just um yeah productivity um my passion for uh, for the art as well, just just for the work and the in the whole process, and just constantly trying to absorb and become the best artist that I possibly can be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just just constantly trying trying to explore. Um, you know, and trying to be better, trying to be a better you know artist, be a better person. Um, you know, we're all flawed, and I know I have many, but um, you know, still trying to. You know, still probably going to be 95 years old in my studio, you know, yeah. and, you know, not knock on wood, but don't get a heart attack. You know, I'm like, oh, God, why can't I have more 15 more years to be better? You know, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just always like striving to um, to just I don't want to say like perfect, you know, like um, perfect my work. But it's just like um, always wanted to gr learn and grow and just uh, be like the best artist that I possibly can be with uh with what i'm you know with what i'm given and the circumstances and and stuff like that nice, nice. uh and uh what are you uh what are you working on right now uh i am working on a new series um nice. it's for uh, my uh, my art dealer he uh he wanted to see uh like uh, basically six new paintings yeah um and he really likes this older series uh, that I did uh, called the Nocturne series. Uh, and they're uh, black and white and, and acrylic. Okay. And um, 
and it, it, it took me a while. I made, you know, I did my, uh, I started doing my research, kind of brainstorming. So I came up with kind of like an updated version. Um, it ha it shares elements of that. You can't see it behind me, uh, but what's it called? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a new series of, it's a new series of work. Um, I, I don't know what to call it yet, but it, it is kind of like an updated um, version of my older work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks it, it's it's much more modern and um yeah i guess that, that's all i can say right now it's just a new body of work i'm also working on my subconscious landscapes um that's uh that you've uh, uploaded one like that one painting yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, i'm doing that i was doing some drawings uh, as well um some some drawings some small drawings with uh, archival ink on okay. paper just to kind of um just to kind of like focus more on mark making and um yeah i, I really want to go back to actually some of my uh film photography work uh but that's more of like street photography and now you know uh since we're on lockdown i can't really do that um and uh i can't really sculpt right now as well so uh oh, no way. yeah yeah, that sucks. This this lockdown it just kind of changes everything. But as artists, uh, you know, we do have a way of uh, adapting and just yeah, yeah. You got to survive and adapt, and you know, I mean, like again, you got to do the best with what you're given. And sometimes, yeah. you know, it, things are not as good, and sometimes things are are better. But you know, okay, okay. Uh, and I guess that's how you work. Uh, and that is that actually falls into the next question. Uh, do you work in series in terms of your artwork or is it just like once in a while you do something random here, you'll do something random there? Is it like you focus on one series in a long, uh, over a period of time, I suppose? Uh, well, um, I don't really, uh, I don't really see it as, as kind of like I, I'm working on one thing at a time, one thing at a time. I believe it's, uh, if if you're a fine art artist and you work on your entire body of work right it's 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 all continual yeah. so sometimes you know uh, circumstances like you can't leave the studio and you don't have access to like canvases then you probably will have paper then you can do some drawings yeah 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 um so my subconscious landscapes um are my main body of work right now i'm doing like the new Nocturne series. Nice. Um, but, uh, but there's, I'm always trying to uh, see other, see other work, I'm always brainstorming. So I always carry like a small little um, sketchbook around me in case I have a, like an idea. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I'll, I'll write it down and then I may not see it till like a year from now or, or a few weeks from now or, you know what I mean? So it could be like an idea for sculpture or an idea for painting. Uh, so it's just kind of like listening to, uh, listening to your intuition, uh, you know, because like you have to know when to, when to let go of something, when to let go of a painting, when like, when, when the painting is finished. And when it comes to my work, which is much more abstract, it's, it's not very clear uh -huh. um, to know when a painting is complete. Uh, if you're doing, let's say something like, if you're painting in photorealism, for example, you can take it uh, you know, so far and then you know when it's complete. But when it comes to abstract, um, I believe that it's uh, much different. Uh, so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, it, it, it's all continual, like it's all a cycle. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Mainly right now, I'm I'm focused on my subconscious landscapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is my main body of work, uh, and this this new series, this new Nocturne series. But from there, um, you know, my work will evolve. Um, I already have some uh, ideas um, that I could actually push my current subconscious landscapes. Nice. Uh, so, uh, and I have some new uh, paintings coming up um that i have to uh photograph and edit and obviously like you know share them on social media um 
so it's yeah it's it's all continual and um yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless someone unless someone hires me for like a commission and say hey you know what i really loved your artwork that you did in 2008 yeah yeah, yeah. you know can you do um can you do can you paint like my portrait in that style i'm like yeah sure you know that makes sense so, yeah. you know but like right now i'm just focused on my subconscious landscapes and my new nocturne uh series okay okay that makes sense uh and uh when you're when you're creating your art right like mm -hmm. what kind of music do you listen to music at all or how does that work oh yeah um i i listen to like about, about 50 different styles of music like it ah. can range from in the morning you know to evening and i mean like um classical to um the trance to lo-fi to um lo -fi, yeah uh to to uh to reggae like um chill hop to um jungle and drum and bass nice. you know to, to trance i mean everything and um but when i paint i like to listen more to, uh, and i've actually found this that uh, i tend to listen to a lot more music that is um that doesn't have vocals yeah, yeah, or yeah. very limited yeah. amount of vocals because that helps that helps me to go into that state uh that state of flow uh, yeah, as, yeah. It's, as, as it's called in the scientific community um I know Michael Jordan coined it, uh, enter the zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so, and I find that, uh, that, that music um, that doesn't uh, have a lot of vocals and is just very melodic and I don't have to kind of like worry about if it's good or not. Yeah. I just have, have it playing yeah, and yeah. then it just helps me. But, you know, sometimes I got to shake things up. So, um, you know, because sometimes you, you try, uh, what worked in the past but then for some reason the next day it's not working so you gotta yeah, yeah. <laughs> constantly you know find like a creative solution for that yeah you know and just yeah so i mean uh yeah i listen to a lot of different music uh definitely nothing no country or top 40 that's that's definitely not not me ah no way no but, worries um, yeah and uh, so when you're creating your art right like who is it for uh what makes your art important uh who is it for it's you know it in today's day and age um there's a lot of like instant gratification mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of like all aspects when it comes to food you know before like people used to sit down meal together you know now it's just like hey i want food now got it go you yeah, know yeah, yeah. like uh with art um or, or photography on instagram like people are just scrolling liking next next you know like it's just it's just gone uh what my work um in particularly my subconscious landscapes and a lot of my other older series um they have uh there's an emphasis on texture okay and and because uh, i work with a lot of layers i want um i want people to kind of stop and just observe and, and just study the painting mm -hmm. you know um because it's because my work is is, is abstract um, I will never tell someone like okay here's a painting it's this I don't want to do that no. um, I want to <clears throat> excuse me I want to engage the viewer to um, to use their their own creativity yeah yeah um, you know to basically uh, to study the painting to basically take a moment and stop so exactly what my work is about uh, uh about um uh about capturing uh, you know uh, about the flow and just having the sensation of time and space dissolve and then you are painting uh, you know like when i'm painting yeah yeah and if they could actually um do that themselves maybe not obviously not get lost because uh, you know and they didn't feel that uh that flow because that's actually a very difficult uh thing to do but just take the time to actually study the painting, slow down, um, you know, not like, oh, here's just a nice pretty picture, you know, next, next, next. You know, I want them yeah. to slow down at, at this, you know, very high paced, uh, high in demand, uh, instant gratification type of uh, world that we live in. That, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. And, and your art, like I'm looking at your art, uh, you know, and every time I look at it, I see a, a different, uh detail or something completely different like it's not the Thank same you. 
final thought like last time. And I guess that's what it is. It's like it's, you're capturing the subconscious, uh, which is like a very deep subject. I remember I, I was like, when you when you talk when you uh, when you uh, uh, show that like or when you uh, wrote that down in the uh, comment section uh, for the call to art to artists that like it, it hit me right away because it's like mm -hmm. yeah the subconscious like that's like a huge that's it's so underestimated like we're so yeah. like we're so physical right like but we're not spiritual like we, we ignore the spiritual side of, of existence and i find that a lot of our actual problems can be solved if we know the spiritual side of the humanity like we can solve sickness we can solve loneliness a whole bunch of things but we don't yeah. you know we yeah. consider that uh what's that called Abst is that uh pseudoscience right like they call it pseudoscience which which is crazy spirituality definitely has a huge impact um you know on the human soul yeah um and I, i'm i've been a f i've been fascinated with psychology since i was a little kid nice so it also plays a, a role um but that part of uh like it is it is studied in the uh, scientific community like it's called a state of flow it was written by um there's a book called flow by mikhail um I can't remember his name, but I'm telling you, like his name. I think I think he's Hungarian. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a almost like I think it's like a 15 letter last name that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to butcher anyone's name. Um, but it is uh, it is important, and I mean, like if you really think about the subconscious, like right now you and I are talking, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and we're focused on uh, on what we're uh, what we're discussing, uh, you know, and our eyes are basically intaking all that information yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and our conscious brain is processing like your words, the, the language, you know, like the body language, what's going on on screen. Yep. Uh, I don't know if your viewers can see it, but yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I forget what I was going to say with this. All right. Uh, and um, so your, your conscious brain is processing this, but in the background, yeah, your subconscious, yeah. your eyes are intaking all this information around you. So yeah, right yeah. now I'm sitting in my studio and consciously I'm focused on, on our conversation, but subconsciously and our eyes themselves, yeah. they're, they're taking all this information that's completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, and that's good because otherwise our brains would be overloaded. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, your subconscious plays a huge role i mean there's subliminal messaging that has been studied in, in in psychology for decades um the subconscious is still very um well it's it's in kind of like an unknown field you know yeah, like definitely. you really don't know i mean i think there's like 36 billion neurons i think mm -hmm. uh, in the human brain alone or, or maybe yeah. 20 and i i can't remember but um, quite a bit. And, you know, as someone who loves uh, psychology and loves art, um, uh, I just find it fascinating how when I was a kid and uh, how I got lost painting, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, influenced me. And um, I'll tell you a quick story if you, if you have a little time. Yeah, no worries. Um, I remember, uh, like, when I was a little kid, like I, like I said before, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really understand it. And when I was in, in high school, um, every Friday uh, in my last senior year, uh, I'd, I'd go to high school, uh, I'd go to class at like 8.30 in the morning and then I would come home, Yeah. I'd quickly eat and then I would go to this, um, this trucking company where I was a gate guard. And like all these trucks would like come in and they would go and I would like write the information down. You know, there was some refrigerated units uh, that I had to monitor go out but it was basically a 12-hour night shift every friday oh no way yeah yeah and it was like a small booth like one of those parking booths that you see you know like in um you know in like toronto parking lots yeah, yeah yeah so it was a very small booth and uh and i couldn't i could barely do any like artwork you know i, I couldn't bring my oils because that's a bad idea i couldn't bring my acrylics you know to paint or anything like that and in in class uh because i was like an art major uh, at, a, at an art school yeah, yeah. Um, I brought my oil pastel artwork so I would literally uh, have like my old sketchbook of eight and a half by ten and I would just 
paint for hours when it was like dead of night, you know, uh, for like for 12 hours. And I just, I still have my sketchbook with me where I have like nice. four or five paintings that I did a night. And I remember just like, just getting lost in, in, in painting because uh, yeah, I was so yeah. concentrated on what I was doing. And I'm just like, this is such an incredible, amazing feeling. I just didn't want it to stop, you know? And, <laughs> you know, I was tired, right? Because I went to uh, I went to school in the mornings and I had to do yeah, a 12 hour yeah. night shift. And then, you know, Saturday, 7 a.m. I had to, uh, I had to come home. So, but I mean, like it, it was worth it. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I get that. Like uh, I've, uh, I've uh, you know, once you reach flow, I find that it is, it can become addictive. And, uh, you know, and like, you know, and the way I, well, it led to me uh, to having created Creative UTO uh, because the flow, like, we, we live in an abstract world, like, in terms of being artists, right? Like, some, like it, it can be 3 a.m., 4 a.m., Sometimes it can take three days, four days, and we're working on one single artwork. Sometimes yeah. we'll be sitting there for like a week and we just create like something amazing within five minutes. Uh, but the way the world works right now, it, it, it doesn't work that way. It's nine to five, right? And, and, and yeah. everybody, you got to get a job, you got to work 40 hours, and, and it, it's counterproductive to an artist. And so my, my goal when I'm thinking of coming up with a solution to that, it's like, how do we come up with that? How do we get around it in this, this, on this, on, in this world? And it's like, it's by creating a community of us who share resources so that we have, we, we, we don't have to spend a lot of time in, uh, I guess, the physical world and we can go back, be more into the, 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 the subconscious, the spiritual uh, world. Uh, 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 and 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 be more open to creating our artwork, right? Like so, I, yeah, I get that. Like when you're explaining all of that, I'm like, wow, I I completely relate to exactly what you're going through, uh, and I'm thinking that a lot of artists are gonna be relating to your art, uh, to what you just said as well. And uh, okay, uh, and I well, and that goes into the next question. Uh, what is the hardest part uh, of being an artist? Um, aside from uh, as, aside from actually monetary uh, aspects, mm -hmm. um, there are there are a lot. Uh, you know, like you're not just an artist in the sense of like you're creating artwork. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to you have to do everything. You know, you um, like I have an art business, mm -hmm. uh, and and guess what? I'm the accountant. You know, I'm the social media marketer. I'm, I'm the CEO. I'm the, uh, you know, the janitor who washes his uh, his brushes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the creative director that actually, you know, um, that makes the artwork or brainstorms new ideas. Definitely. Uh, I, I'm the IT guy that has to set up my website and has to fix <laughs> problems that you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or just like your creating a website or you're trying to uh, resolve IT issues or, you know, or an engineer's worst nightmare where everything says it's, everything is working, but you look at it and you try it, nothing's working, you know? So um, that part is, is hard, uh, definitely. Uh, but also uh, I can only speak for myself, but it's just being patient with your, with yourself. Definitely. Um, you know, because uh, like I'm, I'm a highly, uh, yeah, I'm like a highly a ambitious person, and like I always try to uh, strive to be the best version of myself. Yeah, yeah. And the best artist, and accepting, uh, accepting a failure uh, or just failed pieces of artwork is 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 difficult. Or it's just like, you know, when you have a lot of, uh, when your time is really constrained and you really want to finish this painting, but it's like, you know, the painting says, sorry, nope, it's not done. Ah. You know, so it's being patient with yourself, uh, I would say is also uh, very hard. Uh, something that I'm, that I'm still trying to learn, uh, but I'm getting, you know, better at it. Um, and, and just juggling, I, I would say, uh, also juggling everything. Um, you know, especially like 
when when an artist is is emerging it's just very difficult to to make um to to pay your your bills yeah 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 and you know you have to take a part time job or you may even have to take a full time job and you have to juggle that yeah well there there's a lot of sacrifice to that and um you know uh, it it's extremely hard to again um to make money out of it and it sometimes it seems like you know you're doing it for months and months and it's like well w- what is the point yeah because you know, yeah. you're just you're just beaten by by life you know something happens and you you know you have a family emergency or a friend's emergency or maybe you have some kind of health issues uh that make it even tougher or you, you know so i mean there's always something so so juggling i would say is like the fourth thing that's um is really difficult you know um and and yeah you know finding the time like i know everyone has 24 hours but um you know you can't be like revving your uh your engine you know at 110 percent for no. for months on end no. every day like you need a break yeah so saying saying when to stop and not feel guilty about it that's also something that uh that i struggle with but it's yeah, yeah. you know it's a work in progress so it can be yeah. Yeah. It, it is actually well it is even when you're uh at the mastery level it's still like that's what's still gonna be separating you from the rest is the, the fact that you know that it is still a work in progress uh it's funny like my next uh pod, uh not podcast but i'm, I'm writing a blog and mm-hmm. one of the chapters in the blog is called level level seven consistency okay and uh, one thing i figured out is when you leave something at a high note Right, like so, a lot of us we try to hit 90s and 100s, yeah. but if you just aim for 70, right, like you don't have to put in as much effort or energy as 80 and 90, and you have enough energy to go into the next project, right? And what happens is like because you burned out, it becomes hard to go back to the project you you finished at. So if you leave just before you reach the peak of that project, uh, you know, then coming back to it, you start back up at the peak. It's almost like driving a car, right? Like mm-hmm. if you know when to change your gear, you just maintain that high speed at all time. Uh, you know, and you, you usually, most cars, you, you change that before you reach the peak of uh, the, I, uh, I don't know the name of it, but uh, like if you, when you listen to the sound of your car, if you switch the gear before it reaches the peak of the sound, they usually are able mm-hmm. to like catch a boost going into the next gear. That makes that makes sense. Like when it comes to uh, my work, I tend uh, I tend to kind of rev it up as you know as high as possible. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you know uh, the results are great. Sometimes they're not. But yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, but if like if I tried my best and I screwed it up or it's not working, then um, you know, I'll, I'll put it down, uh, and just kind of like, um, just observe it, mm-hmm. you know, from at a distance. And if it's time to move on, then, um, then I'm gonna, you know, basically move, move on and let that go. And, uh, and this is something that, uh, that I'm learning too, especially, uh, with my, uh, abstract subconscious work where, uh, I have a painting right now that I'm looking at and I started, um, in 20s late 2017 or early 2018 i can't remember right now yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's it, it's it's huge it's four feet by seven feet and oh, it no. started off really good um you know i tried working on it yeah and uh i came to the conclusion that i'm like you know what i'm just gonna strip it down uh you know uh, uh like unstretch the canvas basically from the frame and just put in a new one Okay. Uh, you know, stretch stretch it again, just so it obviously, and then uh, I already have a few drawings ready to go. You yeah. know, and then just start it basically from brand new because it's uh, like for me, I have to in order to, in order to reach that state of flow, mm-hmm. I have to be peak. And um, and that author, that 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 uh, that psychologist, uh, Mikhail, he he said that. Um, that 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 state of flow is is the peak optimal experience yeah so it, it's and and there's like um it, and you kind of worry about right about what you said earlier where it's like you're afraid of burning out and that's where like trying to find the balance comes yeah, in yeah. so um 
I don't know if anyone has found like, you know, the, the secret miracle of like finding balance in life, but, um, uh, you know, I don't know if they did, but if they did good for them. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, luckily, you know, like I have, uh, multiple disciplinaries that I can do. So I always, like I said before, I, I have like that small sketchbook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, around me so if i get an idea or if i'm listening to some music and i'm like hey i really like this song or i like the title of it or I'll, I'll write it down mm-hmm. or maybe i'll just doodle in there or just maybe write like a quick poem or yeah yeah you know what i mean there's um so which and that kind of helps me not burn out but when it comes to like my subconscious landscapes like i have to be uh revving at a hundred percent yeah yeah and if it's not then it can get like frustrating but i have to remind myself hey you're not a machine yeah, definitely. You know, and it, reaching that, reaching that, um, that state is extremely difficult. And I've spoken to my art professors that are, uh, that are in their seventies, you know, and they're like, yeah, that is, that is a very ephemeral uh, state. You know, it's, you know, it, it, it it's kind of like a cigarette breeze, you know, it's there and then it just disappears. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. so, and, um, uh, so, so yeah, so it's, uh, so that's basically why I have to rev at, you know, at a hundred. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, so the last question, uh, like, so basically the, the initiative for creative unicorns of Toronto is, um, to help with isolation, uh, mental health and, uh, uh, uh homelessness in our community. And uh, so, like, uh, how do you uh, deal with, 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 with those subjects? Like, how do you deal with isolation, mental health, mental illnesses, and uh, homelessness? Uh, like, what is your view or take on it? Uh, that's a loaded question. Um, sorry, can you, uh, can you repeat it? Because um, it, yeah. it's like as if there's like two or three parts to it. Definitely. Uh, let me see. No, because it's asking several times. Like I copied them. Babe. What are your views? Okay, so what are your views on isolation, homelessness, and mental illness in the arts community? Um, there is. I know there's scientific data that um, that links, you know, uh, creative individuals much more to uh, issues with like, you know, mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and it's, and I can understand why, because when you're doing artwork, you're, yeah. you're kind of like expressing who you are, whether exactly. it's good or bad artwork, you know, it's like a part of you. Cause I mean, if, if you have a blank canvas right now, it's nothing. Yeah. You are creating something. You are creating something out of nothing, you know? And, and that's, that's very personal because you know what you may have uh, like a painting that looks like um that doesn't look good you know it looks like crap but you yeah. know, you spent like 30 hours on it yeah yeah and you know you you take criticism uh not you know you don't take criticism well because it's it, it, it's so personal yeah that makes, yeah you know and then you get um so i mean that aspect i um i understand um and you know uh as artists like you have to be um there's like this big five personality traits in psychology where creative individuals are high in openness yeah um so they're a lot more uh they're a lot more engaged in the notion of that they're open to like the different ideas and they explore that you know and when you're exploring the unknown you don't know uh and when you're exploring and you're putting and you're creating something that's so meaningful to you yeah yeah you know you're you're susceptible to um to be much more guarded when it comes to, like criticism definitely um and artists and, and just creatives are are just very like different people you know they see the world differently um and, and and that's fine you know um you know like uh they may sl- i don't i don't like using this term like stop and smell the roses type of thing but <laughs> they'll they'll just they can look at an object or they have a more an idea and more abstract out of the box type of thinking yeah yeah which could 
put them in, in isolation amongst the general public. Like I, I have a wide variety of different friends that are, you know, some are uh, liberal, some are conservative, some are libertarian, some are yeah. the unknown, you know, don't want to say, uh, <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and that's fine. Like, I can get along with a lot of people, but I know that um, it's sometimes hard to connect with them. Yeah. Just like, well, what do you want to talk about your work? And if you say something, like if I just say, oh, I, I study, um, I capture, um, I paint the subconscious landscapes of the human subconscious during a state of flow through mark making, texture and color. If someone who's not, someone like a general public or, or like even, you know, like my friends or family who are not familiar with like art or art terms, you know, they'll be like, oh, okay. And, you know, they don't know. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't know how to like approach it, you know. They're kind of uh, afraid not to say anything stupid, to you know, to sound stupid, or make fun of them, or you know. So, so there's like a disconnect, uh, and how like you know creatives uh, feel, um, you know, uh, in, in isolation. And I know I always uh, had that feeling too. Like when I was in school, I was always kind of like the outsider. Uh, yeah. Even when I was uh, in. Um, in in uh, in high school I, I was an art major you know uh i felt kind of like being on the outside because the only thing i wanted to do was just basically read put on my headphones and just like be stuck in my my sketchbook and just doodle and draw and, and, and paint and that was like my interior world you know um and i remember when i went to uh to ocad um for the very first time uh when i was at, when i got you know uh, when I applied and, and I was like my first day of school, it was just, it was just such a breath of fresh air. You know? Cause I'm like, Holy, like, I'm like, I feel right at home. Like everyone's different. Everyone's just doing their thing. Everyone is like, yeah, like doing art. You know, there's some that are like extremely passionate as much as I was. So like, I, I felt, I felt connected, but years later, it's like, um, when I was still gone in this school, I still kind of felt like an outsider amongst the outsiders. Yeah, you know, because I was just constantly like, you know, because um, I was a, because they were obviously younger. You know, I'm a little bit older. Okay, okay. I went back to school, um, to university. Um, you know, and you know, it was kind of like, okay, they went off to like party or what's it called to bars and clubs, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay here. And, ah. You know, <laughs> you know. So I mean, and that's fine. Um, I actually. I embrace that isolation because I always kind of like being different. Um, you know, I, I don't like, um, yeah, I just, I always like being different. I always like, like the underdog and, you know, so I understand that isolation and it being much more of an introvert, you know, you have to learn to, to balance, um, going out there, you know, like if you're, yeah, yeah. If you're an artist, and you feel isolated because you can't connect with like, you know, um, if you can't connect, for example, maybe go to like uh, an art gallery during an, uh, an art opening. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know that would freak out a lot of people because I was the same way where I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to say, but just go with, you know, if you've never done that before, just go to like an opening. You don't have to say or, you know, approach anybody, but just kind of be in that environment. Yeah, you definitely. Know, it's like listen to what other people are saying so that, you know, so that you can get comfortable, um, you know, not have your anxiety like through the roof. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, if you feel isolated, then, um, you know, uh, ask a friend like, you know, hey, let, let's let's grab a coffee. Let, let's grab, you know, let's go for all you can eat sushi or, or let's grab a pizza or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, definitely like creatives feel a lot of uh, isolation in that sense and not to mention a lot of their work is solitary you know they're they're in the studio uh doing graphic design or painting or um you know planning something on the computer or keeping track of their you know uh of their their data for example yeah yeah um so it, it's a lot of s solitary work but it's important to hey like get out there and if they, if they are feeling, you know, isolated and alone, just, just go for a walk. For sure. Uh, you know, even just like around the block and just like five minutes, like 
new scenery, fresh breath, you know, you know, fresh breath of air, um, just can, can do wonders, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely. Thank you so much. That was the last question. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for part, for being part of this podcast. And uh, you, awesome. you are the second uh, person that we're recording today. Awesome. Uh, and overall, and uh, from my perspective, it is a learning experience, but I pretty much have a handle how everything is going to go forward. Uh, but yeah, like it was an amazing chat uh, and I'm looking forward to doing more uh, more chats and uh, see more of your artwork and uh, hopefully be in a position where uh, we can be successful working together, sharing resources and uh, getting your artwork out there uh, with Creative UTO and uh, Gallery 1017 as well. That would be great, Michael. I really yeah. appreciate it. Definitely. Uh, you have uh, anything else uh, to add or subtract uh, for the, 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 I guess, the people out there watching uh, or listening? Uh, when you say add or subtract, um, what no, do you mean? I, I guess uh, anything to promote or anything uh, to advertise. Like, where can they find you online, I guess? Uh, online, um, you can f uh, find me on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, which is, my handle is Camille. Mm -hmm. Is K A M I L mm -hmm. the artist? So Camille the artist. You find a lot of my work uh, that I'm posting. I post a lot of like work in progress. So yeah, you actually can see um, my subconscious landscapes how they evolve over time because I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I paint it um, many layers. I'm talking like over 20, 30 sometimes. Uh, some of those paintings are like I started in one year and I finished it a year or two later. Uh, there was like one painting that took me four years to do because no I wasn't happy with it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't happy with it and I didn't know how to proceed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like my subconscious didn't figure it out. So I'm just like, okay, you know, I followed my mentor's advice and I just, uh, you know, put it close by and and just walk by it uh, every day or, you know, and just basically uh, listen to the painting. Nice. Um, yeah, and, and right now on Instagram, I don't know, uh, you said you'll be uploading it on Monday. Yeah, like I'll try and upload for Monday for sure. Like I'm going to work on it right away. Mm -hmm. So like before the whole uh, COVID-19, um, uh, you know, pandemic struck, uh, I was uh, promoting a free art print okay. uh, for my followers. Uh, and I'm also doing like a studio sale. Yeah. That ends on uh, the 31st of March. Okay. So if uh, if people follow me on Instagram um, and all those paintings that I've started um, posting, yeah. Uh, since that, since I made that announcement about that free art print up, up until March thirty first, um, they can just like and tag a friend. And each time they they like a, a painting or a post of mine and they tag a friend, that's uh, one point. So if they like uh, the um, if they like the painting. Yeah. Or if they like the post, that's one point. And if they tag their friends, each friend is like um, one point. So at the end of March 31st at midnight, I'm going to uh, add up um, all the scores or all the points. Um, and whoever is the uh, the winner with the most amount of points, I'm going to send them anywhere worldwide, like a free hand signed uh, art print Nice uh, of, uh, of an older work. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, they can also check out my main website, which is just my full name dot com, which is uh, Camille yeah. Swatek, just K A M I L S W I A T E K dot com, and that's my main website. Um, and there's a few other websites as well, but um, Instagram and my main website probably would be the best uh, to see uh, to see my work. Okay. For sure, I will uh, add those links to your uh, your page, and uh, I will work on uh, getting this uh, podcast published as soon as uh, Monday, hopefully. And uh, yeah, like this is amazing. Like uh, you, this is amazing. So I'll continue to work work on this. And if I need anything uh, going forward, I'll send you an email or just message you on 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 uh, Facebook uh, so good. that we can get things going. Sounds good. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much for being part of this interview, Camille, and uh, you have yourself a wonderful weekend. You too. Happy Friday, and um, thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Really appreciate Perfect. it.
All right, all right. Take care.